As geologists, we studied the Earth's history, how its features formed, how they changed over time, and how life has played a role in all of it, like in biodiversity booms and in mass extinctions. Life has faced threats again and again for billions of years, like the end Cretaceous mass extinction that famously spelled the end of all non-avian dinosaurs, or the end Permian that took out roughly 90% of all species on Earth. But I want to talk about another one of these challenges that's happening right now in the modern day. We are facing a biodiversity crisis. Every year, more and more species become endangered or die out completely. And this has been happening for the last 200 years, and we're pretty sure humans have a lot to do with it, whether it be from pollution, loss of habitat, or any of the other environmental effects of man-made climate change. I get that it doesn't seem like such a big deal compared to the devastating amounts of lost life in past extinction events, but there's something important to note here. Mass extinctions are slow, and while there's a lot of estimates for how long the end Permian actually took, some of the shortest ones are still over 100,000 years. That's a long time for species to evolve and adapt to all these rough changes in their environment, and for some of them it still wasn't enough time and they went extinct. Today, all these endangered species don't have time like that. While around 1 million are already facing extinction, it's estimated that nearly 40% of all species on Earth may become critically endangered or completely die out by the year 2100. That's 77 years, literally just a few generations away. But it's so much more than just wanting to live in a world with polar bears. It's the fact that extinction disrupts the web of life that connects every species on Earth. One group dying out affects another group and another, and it all leads back to us in our everyday lives. So no, humans don't get to say, eh, it's mostly random obscure animals halfway across the globe, so whatever, it doesn't affect me. Because this isn't something that we're just watching off in the distance from the comfort of a rocking chair on our porch. It's a fire in our own neighborhood that's burning up the cul-de-sac. And when our neighbors, all the other life that we share this planet with, are gone, who will be coming over for a barbecue? Whose pool will we play in? Whose lawnmower will we borrow? Well, you don't have to worry about that last one, because soon enough, that fire is going to come creeping up our pretty perfect lawn right to our front steps we would be next. And that's why action has to be taken now to prevent disaster, not just for us, but for our beautiful neighborhood we call Earth and for the community that lives in it. But we can't do it alone. In comes Earth Justice, the nonprofit environmental law organization that's been fighting legal battles for the Earth for over 50 years and have played crucial roles in landmark cases that protect biodiversity from both corporate and government harm. And now, decades later, their team of organizers and lawyers continue their efforts to battle this modern crisis by launching their biodiversity defense program that's made great strides in the fight since its founding in 2021. Because Earth Justice is a nonprofit organization, they don't charge their clients a cent, and they don't take donations from government entities or corporations. Instead, the funding for all the incredible work that they do comes from fundraising campaigns and events, contributions from foundations, and donations from individual supporters like you and me, if you're up for it. You can also get involved with their action alerts, which call to arms the vigilant people to make their voices heard, not just to legislators, but to their communities to maximize the impact that we can make together. Visit earthjustice.org to learn more about how you can support their fight for biodiversity, because the earth and everything that lives on it needs a good lawyer.